And Utah State, it was wild. Again, in their last game against San Jose State, a Mountain West record 43 three-point attempts. So there is up to the minute Mountain West Conference standings. Nevada has already clinched the regular season title. There you see Boise right there, and then who wins this game will be the number seven seed in the Mount West Tournament. The loser will be the number eight seed. The difference is if you're seven, you play Colorado State. If you're eight, you play Air Force. I think you'd rather be seven only because of all the turmoil at Colorado State. In years past, you wouldn't necessarily want them in the opening round. Marvin Menzies, one of the real good guys in all of college basketball. I've loved that guy since I met him in 2005. We were both at the University of Louisville. Just always got a smile, he's charismatic. Tim Duryea, doing a nice job, but boy, expectations around here are high. Coach Morrow created an atmosphere where he expected to win 20 games every year, so the pressure's on Duryea to get this team back to their winning ways. UNLV in the black and red. Utah State in white and blue. Houston makes the shot. That's no surprise because he shoots almost 64% from the field, the best in the Mountain West. Yeah, high quality possession for UNLV early on the road. An auspicious start to the runner Rebels. Darton teams. Nice half court sets lead the layups. The first meeting between these two teams came. Back on January 6th, Utah State won at UNLV, 85-78. They had a late 9-0 run to get a tough road win. Dwayne Brown, finger roll is good. The Aggies blitzing the pick and roll, Ari, and it resulted in a turnover breakout style and a finish at the other end. Yeah, just excellent execution that time. Dargenton without hesitation. Feeding his teammate as the Aggies go up early. Back with the basketball. Juiced and underneath McCoy. The one-handed throwdown. So two of three possessions for UNLV, quite effective, Ari. With, <laughs> you cannot get a more high percentage shot than that. Merrill challenges McCoy and scores. Merrill in Mountain West play only has just been outstanding. Top scoring duo in the Mountain West, Merrill and McEwen. Now number 11, Alex Darchenton has first. McCoy with the dunk. Yeah, just a great look here. Quick pass from Houston finding McCoy, the big man. And of course, Ari, the numbers that McCoy was able to put up, 33-10 and 10 against Aiton in Arizona. Also 26-17 against Collette and Utah. Of course, Collette formerly played here at Utah State. And, you know, his leaving, I think, is still having an effect on this program. Yeah, I mean, they had, they had a quality five that would have been a real impact player, maybe a first-team All-Mountain West kind of player. Yeah, and stole Janicek and Miller out for the season. Early yeah. Injuries that, you know, you tend to forget about it because it's in the rearview mirror, but that, I agree, are a little bit of a hangover effect from Collette and these injuries. Pull-up jumper is short, loose ball. Running Rebels have it on the move. Johnson back to Houston. Houston goes and gets it. Now it's Beck showing off with their quick jumpers. Houston got up and down off the floor so quickly to keep it alive. Yeah, attacking the offensive glass. One of UNLV's strengths. to go inside, gonna challenge the big guy. Dargenton, and nope, McCoy gets the rebound. Good defense by UNLV, deep into the shot clock, Ari, not easy to do. The defensive possession does not end until that defensive rebound is secured. McCoy able to corral it on that occasion. Houston baseline jumper, yes. 
I joined his fan club opening <laughs> night of the season when I was at the Thomas and Mac. If he can get his range to maybe 18 feet, this guy's potential is limitless. The Q and nice backdoor move. Easy two. Dargenton, very nice assist there. But getting back to Justin, he doesn't take bad shots. He's very even keeled. He's got a lot of game. Yeah, he really does. And you notice that they ran two at him, Ari, with that short corner jumper that he just drained. McCoy attracting a lot of attention as well. UNLV does not shoot the three ball very well, so you can go under screens and blitz guys on a pick and roll situation. Johnson the turnover, but Mooring gets it right back. Heady play by Mooring. Johnson to drive. Good defense for Merrill. And they'll have to reset in the half court. Johnson didn't look to shoot it there. It's Mooring, deep three, no. Brown the rebound. I think, doesn't Johnson have to look to score there? Yeah, and you know what, Ari, that's the issue that sometimes your confidence wanes when the three ball is not effective of late. A little hesitation that time. That three is off for Brown. Mooring looking for Justin, and Justin is fouled by Brown. As Justin got out quickly and was looking to get an easy two. Fast-paced game. And McEwen gets the layup off the beautiful pass. Runner Rebels lead by two. Now this is a look at the tournament bracket as it stands at this very moment. There are still games going on, games to be played tonight. But as it stands right now, UNLV would have Colorado State and Utah State would take on Air Force. Wyoming and San Jose State would be the third game on Wednesday. Uh, Nevada is certainly the favorite to win the tournament. Who do you think are a couple of teams to look for? Because the Mountain West would love to get two teams in the tournament. And if Nevada doesn't win the tournament, they're getting in either way. Yeah. So you know what, Ari? You've got to think that uh, Paul Weir and New Mexico, Rodney Terry, if Fresno State could have the Bulldogs percolating. So... It's kind of wide open in a way to take Nevada's hegemony of late. Oh, there was the confidence on the shot from Jordan Johnson. He hits the three, he shoots it 40% from beyond the arc. He's now made 47 threes this season. So coming into tonight, Nevada, excuse me, UNLV, 11th in the conference, shooting just 29% in conference from downtown. Jong picked up the personal foul there. He just came into the game a freshman. Big body, 6'11", 215 pounds. McEwen, the triple, swish. McEwen not shooting it great this year from beyond the arc, 34%. He had such a great freshman year. Expectations were just so high. He still had a very good season, but I feel like expectations were that he'd be first team all conference. And of course, Ari, as you know, second time through the conference in a campaign. He's getting all kinds of attention on the perimeter. Makes it difficult to operate. Amari Hardy and the shot clock did not reset. Jordan Johnson saying the ball hit the rim, and I think it did. Let's have another look. Because he double clutched it and the shot was short, but I thought it hit off the underside of the rim, Bill, which would make the shot clock reset. Yeah. We've got a great officiating crew with Eric Curry, Frank Harvey the third, and Casey McClellan. All right, so let's see here. Now, before this. Yeah, no, no, it's before this. It was Jordan Johnson had a shot. And it was ugly, <laughs> but I think it did scrape the underside of the rim. Yeah, and he was, of course, selling it hard. Okay, so Jordan Johnson gets bumped. Very tough shoot. Oh. And then, yeah, it hits yeah, the rim. Yeah, so Johnson, you're right, Ari. Tough attempt shooting it as the elevator is going down. But essentially, he got himself a new shot clock right. out of it. Exactly. And you know, are you talk about Utah State? 
and their recent struggles from downtown. You know, they were 12 of 43, including three of 19 in the second half in the loss at San Jose State. So the last three halves, they've really struggled from downtown. This should give us a great look. Our outstanding crew getting it done. And it gets up there and bam, right up the rim. That's a great look, guys. Well done. So UNLV will have the basketball. So just to give perspective on Utah State, they've been a little Jekyll and Hyde because their best wins, they beat Fresno State, they won at UNLV, and they beat Boise State. Right, and you know what, it's unbelievable. Jekyll and Hyde is right. They started three and one, they lost four straight. They've currently lost four straight, so uh, it's just been kind of an up and down deal. Same for UNLV. We see a little zone thrown out here by Tim Durier. That's how coaches have stressful nights when you don't know what you're going to get from your guys. It's, you know, it's one thing you kind of know what you got. Exactly. You sleep like a baby. You wake up and cry every three hours. That's not a good pick. You can't lean that shoulder in. John picks up his second personal quickly, and he goes to the bench. And remember, this is Kyle Lowry, Tim Capstraw, the Nets radio analyst in Brooklyn. The only thing you can be late for in the NBA is a screen being set for you. And the same applies in the Mountain West. Oh, very nice. Brown with the dunk. Now, the Aggies, when they share the basketball nicely, it's really critical to their success. Nine and two when they have 15 or more assists, and so far they look good sharing the basketball. And Ari, to your point, what they're doing is stretching the floor and making UNLV defeat, uh, defend, excuse me, the full 50 feet wide. And you see here, you just get caught on a backdoor scenario there. Very intelligent play by Dwayne Brown Jr. And, and just to highlight, they are on a great pace. Utah State has made six field goals and they have five assists. That is a terrific ratio to amplify your point of their success with 15 or more dishes. And to Tim Duryea's point, they're getting the swishes. And, you know, I just think that you could get a, a little bit too focused on the three-point shot. And tonight, they're doing some great backdoor cuts, and they're getting easy shots, which may lead to three-point success. But you and I often talk, we do a lot of games together. Start inside, then work outside. Yeah, exactly, Ari. It opens up opportunities. It also builds your confidence. And guess what? You're a better defensive team when the opposition is taking it out of the net and you can set your defense. Well, they can't give McHugh in that shot. They missed it this time. Jordan Johnson. Transferred from UW-Milwaukee when he was there. His final year there, over eight assists per game. Second best in America. He played for Rob Jeter, of course, now on Marvin Menzies' staff. What a step. Both staffs absolutely terrific. Johnson, not this time. Sam Merrill, the rebound. The three. Yes. He's made 86 three-point field goals this season. Got a whistle underneath that's going to go against the runner Rebels. And notice here, Ari, just using the, the pick beautifully by Taylor. And let's face it, Merrill is a conundrum to guard with his ability to score off the dribble, utilize the pick and roll, model of consistency. I know one, you're very yeah, high on him. One of the great shooters in the conference. This number blows my mind. In Mountain West play only, from beyond the arc, he's shooting almost 54%. <laughs> That's insane. It is. It's incendiary. Just on fire, Ari. That is, that is sky high. And overall for the season, at 46%, he's eighth best in America. Perry. No more in the rebound. Yeah, it's just rarefied air for Merrill. You're absolutely right. Good transition defense here by Utah State, Ari. Another thing that Tim Durier was stressing to us at the shoot-around, UNLV so good in transition. But again, when you shoot that high percentage, your defense is better. Mooring, no, McCoy is there, and 
very good on the offensive glass, Brandon McCoy. Former McDonald's All-American, they're working hard on the glass. Gonna go get coached up. Utah State leads by two. Senior night at the Spectrum in Logan, Utah. Alex Dargenton ends his career. Tim Durier out there. Bouquet of flowers and a signed basketball. Only two seniors. The other, Julian Perry, senior from Texas. So congratulations to both those guys on their careers at Utah State. Always bittersweet, knowing it's coming to an end. But I always say when there's conference tournaments around the corner, there's always hope. Yeah, absolutely, Ari. No question about it. And, uh, you know, with Perry, he's one of the four-year guys here at Utah State. And, of course, with the uh, turnover in college basketball, that's not as common as it used to be in Dargenton out of France via the JUCO route. Both have been real staples, have played oodles of minutes for the Utah State Aggies. Change the defense up here. Another look. So does the zone. That's it. That, yeah, that's a tough pass attempted there by Houston. It was one of the point of emphasis, is emphasis at shoot-around, Ari, that the defensive intensity needs to be there whether you're in man-to-man -man or zone. So Aggie's able to force a turnover out of the zone. Taylor doesn't want the layup because Merrill oh, knocks oh, down the triple. With the triple. Excellent, exquisite execution by Utah State, Ari. To your inside out point, they were able to do that. And we also have to congratulate him. He recently got engaged to a current Utah State soccer player. Absolutely, that's big news off the floor. Yeah. McCoy. When you're that big, I don't like to see the guys fade away. How about you? I'd rather see him attack. Yes, and you know what, Ari? I think part of it is what the defense gives you and your reps as far as skill development with certain post moves. So sometimes there's a move like that, the defense plays off of you. But in general, you're right, because the opportunity there to get to the free throw line. Right, and no, there's nobody on Utah State that can physically match him. Correct. I just figured you back the guy down and just take advantage of the size. Now, loose ball, shot clock did not reset. McEwen's triple is no good, loose ball. And it's off Utah State. So great pass, inside out by Taylor, finding Merrill. It was a high pick and roll scenario. So really good offense by Utah State early in this one. I, I, I want to mention Quinn Taylor there, Phil, because for a forward, to have an assist to turnover ratio of 1.7, that play illustrated. Smart decision there. He, he's there, he knows he's got one of the best three-point shooters in America, and gets a ball to him. And whenever I see a forward that has an assist to turnover ratio over 1.5, I think it's worth noting. Yeah, yeah. It's Those are big numbers. And you know what, Ari, it's kind of like the John Calipari analytics that he looks at as far as an assisted turnover ratio for a three, four, or five, as far as small forward, power forward, or center. He says one of one to one, you have a chance of being a star in the NBA. Now, that's no disrespect to Taylor. He may not be in the category of recent guys, you know, like a Willie Coley Stein, it was 1.45 at Kentucky. But for Taylor to be producing at that level is extremely impressive. And again, all you have to do is look at the John Calipari analytics and Taylor has lived up to that in a big way. I'll let you handle all the metrics. It's, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> and I was promised there'd be no math. <laughs> McCoy at the free throw line, the spin, and he's fouled. I mean, they could accumulate a lot of fouls on Utah State by just getting McCoy touches in the lane. Yeah. And you know, here that foul call, Ari, unfortunately on the floor for UNLV, but you're absolutely right. Can you get to the free throw line on the road? 
to close the gap. It's just a five-point gap, of course, it's and, early. And, yeah, and UNLV hasn't scored in four minutes. And Taylor with the block. Well, Taylor did a nice job coming off the bench. Four stops in a row, and it's McEwen, he misses the dunk. Mooring the triple. No. And Taylor able to save it. So five stops in a row. And they call three in a row a kill, a turkey. So that's very pleasing for Tim Durier. Their goal was six in a game, by the way, Ari. As a lot of teams have similar type goals defensively, and those are things that they're actively tracking. Team goals, individual goals, and grades defensively. Nice pass by Johnson, setting up Beck, who will go to the free throw line. Real bright future for Beck. Very physically strong for a freshman. And of course, you know, when you look at UNLV, they've got 19 wins. They've got nine new players. And let's let's go back. They won 11 games last year. So by any measuring stick, it's been a dramatic improvement. Yes. And of course, Ari, as you alluded to earlier, just a week, 10 days ago, they're right in the mix in the, you know, for like the upper echelon of the league. But you they were going to get a bye. Right. And I know expectations in Vegas are sky high. But if but, you step back and you think, okay, you won 11 games last year, and they win tonight, they've won 20 games, and they still have the Mountain West tournament, but you got you got to build year by year. Yeah. You don't, not in one year you suddenly become a tournament yeah. team. It's not, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, Coach Menzies and staff, and Beck a prime example of talent that they've brought in. Out of Cleveland, Ohio. Now can UNLV out, Ari? The challenge here is they got to defend. You know what I'm saying? Tougher. They got. They've got. Utah State has got to feel them, whether it's on the perimeter or on the interior in the painted area. They've got to be tougher here. Darden Jin, right by McQuay. Ah, just missed it. Johnson to Justin. He got it to him in a tough spot. There was a lot of traffic there, but UNLV will maintain possession. Now Justin's done, doing a great job here of rim running, and you're right, or he just couldn't get the handle on it. But Jordan Johnson doing a terrific job. Head up, those eight assists per night. You mentioned that Wisconsin-Milwaukee playing for Rob Jeter now on the UNLV staff. Both teams with defense in front of their respective benches here first half. I mean, that's where you get it to McCoy that deep. He, he's getting rush. Yeah, lights out. Yep. Lights out. So the question for McCoy is just consistency. Of course, in high school, it was checkers now it's chess level of competition the traveling we know how tough it is to get up here to logan late in the season i mean is he going to be a unanimous choice as the mountain west freshman of the year i mean how could he not <laughs> averaging 17 points and 10 rebounds <laughs> i think my silence yeah. says it all it's He's a tacit endorsement <laughs> for mccoy Woo! utah stayed up one 751 to go first stand Welcome back. Hope you're enjoying your Saturday night. We are coming to you from Logan, Utah. And you know, Mother Nature cooperated. A lot of fear of the elements, <laughs> but we got here. Easy trip from Salt Lake. Coach Menzies is coaching and teaching, and it's got to feel pretty good, Ari, about the start here for UNLV. I think both teams do. I feel like the energy's been good from both teams. Yes. When both teams are coming in with a four-game losing streak, you, you worry maybe is one team going to maybe just not be engaged, but that has not been the case. Merrill. They're very good at moving without the basketball. Yes. Great half-court execution by Utah State. Merrill's already got 10. Great look by Isby, who just checked in. And you're right, Ari. Merrill... It's been so good all year long. Houston misses the jumper. Oh, McEwen tried to do the no-look pass. Merrill ends up with it. 
The tip no good, loose ball, Justin's got it. Running Rebels on the move. It's back for the easy two. UNLV will be in attack mode at every opportunity. They're even rim running on makes, but of course on defensive rebounds, on turnovers, Ari, they are going to push and try to score in transition. McEwen, the floater from the free throw line is way short. And we got bodies colliding and a foul on Utah State and the locals don't like it. It looked like Dargenton fell and clipped Beck, who's down on the floor. Uh, McEwen was on the deck already, and Beck didn't see him. Turned around ran into him. What, yeah. do you, what do you do there? Is that the right call? Yeah, and you know what, I was mistaken. It was actually McCoy. And you're right, so what happened was McCoy turned to sprint in transition, wasn't expecting, of course, McEwen on the deck. So it's just one of those uh, kind of awkward basketball type plays. He just wasn't prepared for that. Great job by our crew here with the yes. look from up top. Yeah, so McEwen's down and McCoy starts running the other way. And if you're in his way, that's a foul. Yeah. Yep. It's just one of those. Uh, well, that one's especially painful because you take the beating and you get the first yeah, That's right. It's like no good deed goes unpunished. <laughs> now, it's not necessarily a good deed, but McEwen's like, hey, I just happen to be occupying the space here. Good help here by McCoy. And he yeah, does a great job by the crew. You yeah. see McEwen Those trying to get to his feet. Yeah. So you've got to turn the page. McCoy so far tonight has got five points and three rebounds. juston has got four points and three rebounds. Leading scorer, surprisingly, has been back. He has eight points for the Runner Rebels. And Sam Merrill, no surprise, leads the way for the Aggies with 10. And that's what you look for is, you know, contributions systemically throughout your roster. And of course, Ari, we talked a lot about the backcourt of McEwen and Merrill. In conference play only, Merrill averaging 17.6 and McEwen 16.8. Yeah, just putting up big, big numbers. And the key really for Utah State is when they have other guys in double figures, that's a big statistic for them. They've got only two wins in conference with only those two guys in double figures. So that foul on McEwen is their seventh. So McCoy will shoot the one and one. McCoy on the season, 73%, which for a guy seven feet tall and a freshman, that's outstanding. Yeah, really is. His body will develop, Ari, his, his strength, as well as his skills. Ah, uh, loose ball, careless. Hardy, somehow, with the last little scoop shot. Murray Hardy, four-star recruit who had committed to Oklahoma State before Brad Underwood went to Illinois. The Runner Rebels are happy about that. And now, a foul on Brito. So Brito there just a little dribble handoff and kind of moves there, Ari, instead of establishing a set position. And these are savvy basketball fans here. I mean, traditionally, this has been a very hard place to win. But sometimes you only see it from one lens. <laughs> <laughs> that was right call. <laughs> this is true. Houston. Where do the points come from? It's got to be Merrill with this bunch on the floor. Exactly, Ari. You read my mind. Now you've got Dargenton and Merrill on the floor, but some 
reserve guys. How does Utah State sustain things without McEwen on the floor? Well, but there, Darterton gets the foul on McCoy. I mean, that, that's a real good possession. If they get McCoy on the bench, that would be a huge hurdle to overcome. Exactly. And we see Coach Menzies here voicing his displeasure with that foul call on McCoy. And Just his first. And, and you know what, Ari? It's very important that Utah State maintains their poise and composure here on their home floor. Senior nights, a lot of emotion. You've lost four straight, trying to turn things around. So you have to, in a way, focus on the next play and move on. You've got to leave it in the rearview mirror. Good game here tonight, one point game. Aggies with the lead. Final regular season game for both schools. Mount West Tournament starts Wednesday in Las Vegas. Fun time of year. So much college basketball will be played over the course of next week. It's hard to keep track of all the conference tournaments at the same time. <laughs> it is absolutely terrific. Are you right? The calendar has flipped to March. So much excitement, anticipation. And, and for the big tournament, for the NCAA tournament, it's wide open. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. It there is, is not one dominant team. It's uncanny. We saw that wild Virginia finish over Louisville the other night. Oh, nice pass. Taylor with the dunk. But it was the pass from Dargenton. Bigs are so skilled for both teams tonight. Houston gives it to McCoy. There was a whistle before the basket. You see, you get multiple touches here, Ari. You get a little high-low action. Great pump fake by Dargenton. And how about Taylor gave it to him first, and then he gets it back. Very nicely done. Yeah. So magnanimous and unselfish are the Aggies. At the free throw line, Brandon McCoy. That was a good stint for Hardy. He takes a break. You mentioned what a major recruit he was, Ari, for Coach Menzies, and we know his success at New Mexico State and what a terrific coach he is. Great coach, but with, in all due fairness, he was regularly going to the NDA tournament there because they were the dominant team in that conference. Mount West got a lot of good teams in the conference. You may be the dominant team a year or two, but not this year. Yeah, definitely a different environment for sure. And he said it today, Ari. You know, you're never satisfied, of course, despite the 19 wins. You want more, of course. McEwen way off on the three, and the runner Rebels try to take advantage. Johnson almost lost the handle. Houston just muscles his way. Dargenton played very well in the first half. He made it tough on Houston. Yeah, he's been very active on both ends of the floor, Ari, on the glass in particular. Brito is bumped, and he'll shoot two free throws after the break. These two teams back and forth, end to end. It's the Utah State Aggies right now clinging to a one-point lead. We're coming right back to Logan. Legendary coach Stu Morrill, he won a lot of games, and until I moved to the western part of the United States, I didn't really have an understanding of his level of success. The guy won so much and did it with a unique style, and he was a nice guy, but boy, he could be intimidating too. He's a big guy standing <laughs> over there. And you see there the terrific tenure, Ari, of Stu Morrill. Utah State with 20 NCAA appearances in the university's history. And of course, he was an integral part of their success. J.C. Carroll, other terrific players here. And you're right from the standpoint of just, you know, mentioning Logan kind of puts a literal and figurative chill in your spine, not related to the weather, but just how tough it is to get W's in this building. And he's a major reason why. Coach Duryea had been an assistant under Coach Morrill, so that made for a fairly smooth transition. 
Yes. To carry on the legacy. But, uh, of course, he's his own guy, for sure. Oh, they're definitely launching a lot more threes with 38 <laughs> than they did with Morrill, that's for sure. The lob, and Taylor comes away with it for the Aggies. McEwen, the crossover. Oh! He'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. Now, this game is kind of interesting, Ari, when you look at within the conference, okay? UNLV is tied for fourth. They averaged 78 per night. McEwen, that was a gorgeous move, did everything but finish. Utah State averages 72 per night. Just great focus in McEwen's eyes as he tried to finish that. So the trend here, a little bit slower than both teams are normal yeah. from a point production point standpoint. Way down. So Kobe McEwen on the season for this team, second in points, second in made threes, first in free throws made and attempts, second in minutes, and tied for first in rebound. 5.2 per game. Ubiquitous in the stat sheet. See a little extension here by Utah State. Out of Toronto, Ari. Of course, Anthony Bennett. So many terrific players from Canada. McCoy misses it, goes and gets it, loses it. And it will be UNLV basketball. I'll tell you, Taylor has been tough as nails tonight, Ari. Really bringing great energy. A junior out of Houston, Texas. So again, critical juncture here. Can Utah State extend this? Can UNLV make a run to take the lead? McCoy with the fadeaway on the baseline. Yeah, see, Ari, there, you, you know, terrific read of what the defense is doing and how they're playing you. So if you have that in your arsenal, uh, that's just a gorgeous move, and you can see the upside and with yet, McCoy. And you can't defend that when the guy is seven feet tall. Yeah, exactly. He's got nine points in the first half. And let's face it, that was a tough outing against Nevada the other night for UNLV. So you've got to be pleased with the way they've turned the page and brought the energy here. And to give perspective, the I mean, they were down 30 at home in the first half. And they had beat Nevada up in Reno. So it was certainly a big surprise. I'm usually guilty of hyperbole, so not a good outing is kind of a nice way of saying, <laughs> <laughs> of saying it. Oh! McEwen as the shot clock was winding down. I mean, Mooring was all over him. He could tell you what type of cologne McEwen is wearing. No basket. Just a great offensive play here. So creative. Mooring all over him. Taylor with the assist. Great extension by McEwen. And that gives the Aggies their largest lead. Lead by half a dozen, less than two minutes to go in the opening half. The winner of this game will be the number seven seed in the Mountain West Tournament. The loser will be the number eight seed. And now we have, of course, Merrill not on the floor. Ari. Hey, 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 senior night. Julian, Julian Perry. Perry, just his fifth made three of the season. At a very opportunistic time as the Aggies extend at home. Hardy is bumped, and he'll go to the free throw line. And now, are you look at the three-point differential. Utah State, 5 of 11, shooting 46%, just 1 of 4 UNLV. So you've got four more made threes by the Aggies, 12 points plus from beyond the arc, and they've got a nine-point lead overall. This final 126 is critical for UNLV. They, they've been, it's been nip and tuck the whole first half. They suddenly go down by more than 10. And by that hard screen, the UNLV player is down as Dargenton scores. And let's make sure Hardy's okay. He is up. It looked like a clean screen. 
The, the, the problem here with the screen, Ari, is that there was not communication for Hardy. We see a strong finish there by Houston. But you see, if Hardy's not getting help, he's on the road, feral environment, very loud. He doesn't know the screen is there. No communication by the defensive player, his teammate, who has the vision and can see it, and he runs into it and pays the price. One thing that Marvin has talked about is it doesn't have a lot of natural vocal leaders on this team. And I find the teams that talk more have that happen less. Exactly. Yeah, no question. You got to talk out there. Yeah. Now that breaks an 8-0 run for the Aggies. So the lead is 9. Very tough demeanor by Hardy to bounce back from that play, Ari, and finish at the other end. Brito, tough shot, gets it to go. Brito from Portugal. Couple second difference, game clock to shot clock. More good bench production for Utah State in the person of Brito. That's team foul number 10, so the double bonus for Brandon McCoy. You know, nine guys have checked in, Ari, for Utah State, and all but one has scored. So in addition to, you know, the top heavy scoring production from McEwen, and of course, what you'd expect from Merrill. They both have 10, by the way, the backcourt. McCoy, three for five from the free throw line in the first half, make it four for six. He's down in double figures with 10. You can see why he was so highly recruited and oodles of potential for McCoy. Knocks them both down. So he's got a chance to have the freshman record for rebounds in a season. Kawhi Leonard. 9.9, .9. as long as McCoy stays close to his average, he's at 10.3. It'll set a new Mountain West freshman record. Henson's three, yes! Great way to end the half for the Utah State Aggies. Final regular season game here at the Spectrum for the Aggies, and they close out the first half with a strong finish. They lead by 12, 42 to 30. McCoy had a good half, but it was Utah State over the last five minutes of the second half. They stretch the lead and they go into the break, leading by a dozen. We got lots coming up at the break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here in Logan.